What's going on guys? It's Jimmy here with your $1,400 third stimulus check update and third stimulus package update. I'm going to give you the latest details on the third stimulus check package that has now passed the U.S. House of Representatives and is going to be voted on in the U.S. Senate, although they are making changes by the minute in the in the Senate that I will give you the latest details on and what we know so far, as well as what to expect coming out in the future. First, we will hear from President Joe Biden on the mask mandates and states that are opening up and removing their masks or removing their mask mandates. I hope everybody's realized by now, these masks make a difference. We are on the cusp of being able to fundamentally change the nature of this disease because of the way in which we we're able to get vaccines in people's arms. We've been able to move that all the way up to the end of May to have enough for every American to get every adult American to get a shot. And the last thing, the last thing we need is the Neanderthal thinking that in the meantime, everything's fine. Take off your mask. Forget it. It still matters. I carry a card. I don't have it. I put it on my desk. As of last, as of yesterday, we had lost 511,874 Americans. We're going to lose thousands more. This will not occur. We'll not have everybody vaccinated until sometime in the summer. We have the vaccine to do it. But getting a shot in someone's arm and getting a second shot, you're going to take time. And it's critical, 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 critical that they follow the science. Wash your hands. Hot water. Do it frequently. Wear a mask and stay socially distanced. And uh, I know you all know that. I wish the heck some of our elected officials knew it. So thank you very much. So President Biden says that removing the mask mandates and not wearing masks is Neanderthal thinking. Yeah. So let me know your thoughts on that down below in the comments. Do you agree with him? Or are you on the other side of the table and you think that we should just go no mask at this point and all steam ahead? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. All right, next up, let's go to the Senate, where we're going to hear directly from Senate Republicans on the third stimulus package today. It's this, it's this so, so-called COVID or reconciliation bill. Um, first, it's, it's not about COVID. Less than 10% of the bill is going to deal with COVID. Less than 1% is going to deal with vaccines. What, one of the things I'm very concerned about is the waste of money that we're going to be end up giving to uh, state Blue state bailouts is basically what it is. I've been talking about this since last year. Um, and now what we found is it's, you know, with the states, you know, a lot of states, a lot of pundits had said, oh, there's going to be all this financial, all these financial problems. Well, even the New York Times has acknowledged that's not happening. If you look at state revenues year over year, they're barely down. They're not even down 1%. Uh, you got a state like California, their revenues are up 27 or $19 billion. They're going to put $22 billion in reserves. We gave, we gave the state and locals $400 billion. Some states have seen it, have the money, extra money we gave them for Medicaid has allowed them to spend money on a lot of other things. States, you know, you see most of these states, or a lot of these states are seeing a significant increase in what their budgets are going to be uh, this next year. So we can't be doing this. I mean, $350 billion, we can't waste the money. We have $27 trillion worth of debt. If, they, if the Democrats pass this uh, bill, it'll be $30 trillion worth of debt. Follow the news. Interest rates are going up. Interest rates are up again today. Inflation is starting to pick up in this country. Who's going to get hurt? The poorest families are going to get hurt. When, they're, when the interest rates go up, it impacts them like that. Already what we've seen is pre gas prices are up. Food prices are up. The poorest families, I grew up in a poor family, when those things go up, it has an immediate impact on these families. So we can't be wasting, we cannot be wasting these dollars. It's the, and, and, the, and so it's, it's pretty frustrating to me that, that we would sit here and spend money like this when we've already paid, the, the state revenues generally are about a trillion dollars. We already gave them 400 billion. And now we're gonna give them another 300 billion, 350 billion dollars. So this is wrong. So yeah, basically uh, Republicans, they really just don't like any part of this uh, third stimulus package at all. Now, let me be very clear because I, I see a lot of this in the news of talking about that only 9% or less than 10% of the money in this package goes to combating the virus. 
When they say that, they're not counting the stimulus checks that go to you. They're not counting the mortgage assistance, rental assistance, utility assistance, and property tax assistance that goes to the people. They're also not counting the unemployment checks that go to the people. They're also not counting the SNAP, WIC, and EBT program that goes to the people. They're also not counting the money that's going to be the child stimulus checks, the child earned income tax credit, that is going to be $3,000 to $3,600, which... Uh, former President Donald Trump and Ivanka Trump actually raised $2,000. Now Biden wants to raise it to $3,000 for children over the age of six and $3,600 for children under the age of six and will be paid out in monthly payments starting a few months from now at $250 to $300 per month per child. None of that money they're including when they say that 9% figure is going towards combating the virus. They're talking about literally money that's going directly to uh, vaccines, distribution, uh, PPE equipment, and that type of stuff, okay? They're not counting the money that goes to you guys, that goes to the people, that goes to the American people, that goes to battling the economic crisis that deals with this, that money that goes to the small businesses to deal with this, the money that um, goes for sick leave that's in here. All the different things that are in there, they're not counting the money for schools that are in there. So, um, yeah, when they say less than 10% uh, of the money goes to combating the virus, please, please take that with a grain of salt. Because if they passed only that, you wouldn't be getting a third stimulus check of $1,400. You wouldn't be getting the child stimulus checks of $3,000 to $3,600, the child income tax credits. You wouldn't be getting SNAP WIC, SNAP, WIC, and EBT programs. There wouldn't be an unemployment extension. There would be nothing for the people. Okay, so please keep that in mind because I see a lot of comments on that. And it's it's really like it's showing one side of a card, okay? It's like, yeah, here's the one. They're talking about 10% goes to the vaccines and the distribution and stuff like that. And that's true, but we're, we're dealing with a bigger price crisis here. I mean, it's not just the virus. It's the economic crisis. It's the homeless crisis. It's the food crisis right now. It's people that are struggling. 10 million people have left the workforce because they can't find a job. There's still millions and millions of people more than normal that are on unemployment. So keep that in mind. I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page here. Also, do you remember Republican Senator Ron Johnson? He's the one who blocked the uh, up and down vote in the Senate for the $1,200 stimulus checks. This is back when we go back to the second stimulus check package. There was currently no stimulus check being in there, and we've seen Bernie Sanders and Republican Senator Josh Hawley both championing for the uh, to include $1,200 stimulus checks. At the time, there was zero, and that movement kind of led to getting at least a $600 check. They took the money away from states and cities in the second stimulus check package, gave the states and cities nothing, and we ended up getting the money in stimulus checks, that same amount of money they shifted over to the people because of mostly the movement from uh, Bernie Sanders and Republican Senator Josh Hawley and also probably former President Donald Trump. Well, if you remember that, they tried to make a movement on the Senate floor, and Republican Senator Ron Johnson was the one who stood up and objected to the up or down vote in the Senate. And uh, yeah, he was not a very popular person for quite a while after doing that. Well, it seems like he's still trying to delay uh, even now the next stimulus check. Apparently, Ron Johnson is uh, invoking a process where he is going to force a clerk to read the entire third stimulus check bill, about 600 pages, on the Senate floor simply to delay the vote or so that it could be heard uh, to anybody that's on the Senate floor at the time. Uh, apparently, this could take between six and 10 hours to read the bill. And apparently he says he wants to delay the bill, but is delaying the bill by a few hours really going to do anything? Some of these congressmen, um, yeah, they just uh, they have all these tricks up their sleeves and will, will do anything they can to, uh, I don't even have words. You let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Now, note that you need unanimous consent to uh, not have the entire bill written, or I'm sorry, read on the floor, which happens with almost every single bill. It's almost a formality 
that they don't do this. Can you imagine if they did this with the second stimulus check package that also had the government funding for the year in there? That bill was 5,500 pages. It was an omnibus bill. It had all sorts of different bills combined. I mean, kind of similar to this bill, but it was 5,500 pages. This bill is 591 pages, so literally 5,000 pages less. Can you imagine if they would have read the second bill on the floor? They would have been there for days, like literally just reading the bill. And nobody would have listened. It's not like they would have went there and listened to somebody read the bill for four, four days straight. But uh, yeah, this is this is a, a kind of a, a formality that's never really ha never really is done in the Senate. Apparently, Ron Johnson wants to do it just to delay things as long as possible. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. With that being said, we did see major changes today to the bill. Uh, the first two, I'll briefly say, is that the Democrats were forced to take out two kind of what a lot of people call pork uh, portions of the bill that really didn't have a lot to do with the COVID crisis or pandemic, they did have to do with transit and a bridge in New York and the transit authority in San Francisco, which is affected by the pandemic, kind of. Like, yeah, transit is down by 90% and the, the workers, they're laid off. There's no money. They need money to prevent from going bankrupt. But regardless, um, they were forced to take that out by the Senate parliamentarian said that that did not affect the budget in the way that it needs to. And a lot of people are happy about that because they consider that pork. They don't consider it money for the people or money for the vaccines. It's kind of like these extra things that are kind of always thrown in these bills. And yes, why they do that. And honestly, they almost always do that with these bills. When we look back at all the last stimulus packages that were passed by Republicans and Senate, you could probably go in there and pick apart a whole bunch of different things. And listen, I get it, but uh, unfortunately, I'm not in Congress to, uh, you know, slim these things down or anything like that. But the problem is, is when you get into this slimming down thing, it's a very slippery slope. Republicans only want to spend $600 billion was their counter proposal. This bill's 1.9 proposal, 1.9 trillion. And well, they're actually going through some slimming down right now. And in fact, this change is going to hurt a lot of people. And that is the change to the income requirements that does look like uh, is currently the case. Now, this is not set in stone at this point, but basically, instead of um, the phase out for individuals for the $1,400 third stimulus check uh, ending at $100,000, it's going to end at $80,000. So the way this is going to work is that an individual can earn up to $75,000 to get the full stimulus check, double that for a couple. Obviously, it's two people, so, you know, one fifty. So if you make over $75,000 as a single filer, um, you'll get the full check. But now if you make up to $80,000, anything over eighty, dollars and you get no check at all, they're literally capping it that quick. So it's going to go from seventy five dollars to eighty dollars is a reduced check, and after $80,000 is nothing. So uh, they, they estimate that up to 15 million people in the United States will not get a third stimulus check because of this change. It's about 12 million adults and 3 million children, the, the children of those parents who won't be getting an adult, because of this income change. I want to stress that it is not set in stone yet. We've been getting a lot of changes, a lot of proposed amendments. We don't even know what's happening with the $15 an hour minimum wage at this point. They're trying to pass it with it in there, but it most likely looks like it won't make it to the finish line. We actually seen President Biden say that about a week ago. But Democrats, a lot of Democrats are fighting really hard to keep that minimum wage in there. I think that most likely... They're going to have to take the minimum wage out of this bill and just set it to the side. And then probably right after the dust settles, when they pass this bill, they will pass this bill. It's really it's just going to be the questions of what is the details? How quick can they do that? And um, is minimum wage going to be in there? Are they going to change the income requirements of the checks? Are they going to reduce a couple pork things in there? You know, basically, when I say pork, it's basically excess spending that people kind of call fluff spending or pork spending, money that a lot of people think that shouldn't be in there. It, for example, in the second stimulus check package, 
we've seen a lot of money go to other countries and a lot of people were all uh, concerned about that. But that was really in the portion of the government spending bill. Every year they have to pass a government spending bill, which is the money for this, the government to run for the year. The government always gives money to other countries. This is not something new. This has been going on for decades. It's just kind of what the U.S. does. Now, of course, I totally agree with the whole thing that we should be helping Americans at home before we do that. But um, somebody did the math on if they took out all the money for what they were spending on um, other countries. And I think it equated to something like a $6 stimulus check for you guys. So if they took all that money out that they're doing for other countries, it would equate to $6 for, for you. So it's really not that much money in the scheme of things, but I mean, I totally get it that they should be worrying about us at home, but the amount that they do for those countries is very minimal. But a lot of people are upset about that, but that actually wasn't in the second stimulus check package. It was in the government funding bill. And every single year when the government does its government funding bill or its budget for the year, uh, they do help out other countries in all sorts of crazy and, you know, <laughs> so many different ways that you couldn't even imagine. And you could probably read them and just like laugh about half of them and say they shouldn't be done. But they are done and they have been done for a while. So that's the thing about these third, these packages. Don't get too caught up in the details and don't get too worked up and mad and angry about this. Just know that. The checks are coming. They're going to pass this bill. It's really just a question of what are the details going to be? How fast can they get it done? And what is going to be the final details of everything that settles in? Honestly, this is only the first package underneath the Biden administration. They've already announced the next package, which they're going to call an infrastructure package. It's called the Build Back Better package. But there will be stimulus in there, probably multiple different things in there, especially kind of like as we get close to the finish line on that next package. I'll probably see a lot of things like, oh, we got to include like literally just today. We had a dozen uh, Democratic senators and congressmen saying that in the next package that they need to have multiple stimulus checks monthly stimulus checks, and they need to set it up on automatic um, triggers so that basically if the economy is not doing well, that the checks just go out automatically. We don't have to go through the process every single time. Now, whether or not that happens or we just get a single check in there, or if they include the social security increase of $200 per month, or if they include the $10,000 of student loan forgiveness uh, that President Biden is in favor for, or if they end up doing those through standalone bills, all that will kind of come like in the few days after this third stimulus check package passes. They really are focusing on this one first. They're going through the amendment process right now. They were on the floor today. As you've seen, we showed Chuck Schumer in the last video, video the Senate Majority Leader. They did not vote on it tonight. So they will be reconvening tomorrow to go through this process. And Republicans are going to try to delay it and stop it as much as they can. But in reality, it's really not going to add up to very much because, well, the Senate is controlled by the Democrats and the Democrats are passing this with the reconciliation process. So really, the question is going to be, what are going to be the details in this final bill? What are the checks? I mean, we know the checks are going to be $1,400, but what are the income qualifications? What are the are they going to change the unemployment? Are they going to change other minor details? Will they take some stuff out or alter some stuff? when they finally pass it. I will keep you up to date with all the latest information. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't yet. It's completely free. Just make so you see the videos a little bit more likely so you get the opportunity to even see the video to click on it. The best way to do it is to click the bell icon if you subscribe and click all notifications because YouTube chooses what videos to show you when you come up on your homepage. So uh, a lot of times, you know, YouTube might show you something else and then you'll miss out on the stimulus update. So just click that bell icon to all notifications, share this video with your family and friends so that they know when this money is coming. And hopefully we vote on this bill tomorrow. I will keep you updated. New videos come out at 10 a.m., 3 p.m., 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can click this top video here to watch my newest stimulus check video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have dozens of students that have replaced their nine to five income selling products on Amazon like me and my wife do, and we teach them how to do that. So click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks guys, and I will see you in the next video.